Ryan, good to see you again. Good to see you as well, Jason. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I see you got the uh, the memo on wearing the same blue shirt. Fantastic. Memo received. Thanks. All right. So today we were hoping to kind of talk a little bit about um, our mutual clients and kind of what we see going on out in the world today of organizations moving to the cloud and the transformation going to cloud and some of the cybersecurity challenges um, that we're seeing there and the opportunities they have. Yeah, actually, we're seeing some very similar trends, you know, in my my team and the, the AWS partner network working with partners all over the world, like like PwC and trying to solve these joint customer challenges around security. We, we have seen the trends align to kind of what you're saying, right? The, the security as a practice inside of these companies can be perceived a bit as a, uh, a bit of a challenge to overcome uh, into their migration plans. And it's really um, sometimes an inhibitor to the pace that the rest of the business wants to, to achieve. So we're seeing kind of two things lying together, which is the security practice in general, as you as you transform that into the cloud, um, and the people around that practice uh, as sort of two big challenges, and and they're definitely linked together, right? So security as a as a profession, as a practice, there's lots of of uh, history here with on-premises, private data center sort of networks. When that transforms into a cloud environment, um, the triaging, the analysis is a bit different. The ind indicators of compromise in the metadata around it is a bit different. And that means that the people or the skills uh, behind the actual practice have to evolve as well. So there is, there's, are some challenges out there um, that we, we have been seeing our, ourselves as well. Yeah, and, and Ryan, I would say, you know, to echo that, that that's some of the stuff we see as well. and. Some of the things we, we help um, organizations overcome in that space, right, is the, you know, scarcity and skill set gap that we see, you know, with AWS type skills as well. And, you know, AWS has a, in a great training program that, that people can take advantage of and PwC has done that as well. But we've also helped our clients take that into practicality and, and put that into, into practice in their organizations. And, and as you mentioned, you know, trying to get the security organization from being the quote unquote office of no or office of slow and being able to build the, you know, skill sets um, to allow the, the business and IT to move workloads and migrate things quicker into, into the cloud and really reap the benefits of that as well. So, um, you know, I think we're going to continue to see more and more of that skill set gap, you know, erode over time or get better over time as people continue to get trained and more and more organizations are are adopting cloud and there'll be more resources out there, but definitely a space where we see our partnership between AWS and PwC really helping our clients kind of overcome that as well. You know, Ryan, maybe a, another area that, that we see, um, you know, an opportunity being is, you know, getting into the, the way that applications are migrated, you know, into the cloud or being built in the cloud a little bit. And what, what I'm seeing out there a little bit is, you know, as I mentioned, the developers and the engineers want to go fast and security, you know, the way they were structured in the past was a little bit more. It takes them two, three, four weeks to maybe do an, a, an assessment of something to be able to give kind of the go, no go to be able to move to production. And, you know, we're seeing that being some of what some way slowing down the organization and causing some friction. And, and we've helped a lot of organizations build a lot of those requirements up front that to enable the developers and the engineers to really truly understand the very specific AWS requirements, the services they can use and how to use them to be able to move things faster. I wanted to know if, if you wanted to kind of comment on that as well and, and what you're seeing from the AWS side. Yeah, th thanks, Jason, for, for bringing that point up. And you're, you're hitting something kind of right on the head here, which is, you know, you mentioned a second ago, decreasing that cybersecurity skills gap and specifically speaking about AWS cybersecurity skills gap that's what we're really you know proud to be to be partnered with PwC about here in creating you know, our, our teams are working together on sort of three different areas of our mutual customers cloud journeys uh, those areas would be assess right so just getting a picture of understanding of current security governance and controls around the existing workload wherever that may be living at the moment Implement is kind of that second cloud journey stage right, for the customers, right? It, building the equivalent, the, the security governance and the multi-account structure and all those best practices as a, as, a, as a safe landing zone for those applications to migrate into. 
And then following on to that, manage, right? So 24-7 security operations of that workload after it gets there. And so, yeah, th these are the kinds of kind of moments in time from our mutual customers' cloud journeys and those that are watching the video that it can help to sort of break down the, cha the challenge, right, of being able to keep up with business innovation and migrations to cloud. If you can think about sort of your projects in those three key time frames, there are excellent bits of help out here. And that's kind of one of the big points I'm trying, I'd like to make is don't go at it alone, right? There, there are skilled AWS security experts through our partner network here at AWS. PwC has, has many of them, very, very, very strong skill sets that we've worked with very closely. And you know, my message to, to the, the audience is, you know, consider your cloud journey as a, as a time frame. It's a continuous time frame here. Consider you know, engaging early and often for outside help. Through AWS, through our partners like PwC, we've been really, really proud about the the joint solutions that we've been bringing to market. Uh, because that you're right, there are very specific skills required to do that assessment of comparing security controls and governances and processes done sort of in the traditional way, the, the non-cloud way, and being able to you know translate that to a more cloudy environment and and having a roadmap of what needs to be implemented. And then procedures and runbooks and SOPs and playbooks, et cetera, for once that workload actually gets into the cloud. Perfect, Brian. And yeah, I think you hit on the, the way we've structured many of our services at PwC as well, right? So it's the assess, build, and operate, you know, very similar to, to what, what you laid out there. And one of the things, you know, I think is um, important to hit on is, you know, PwC is, has a, you know, is a managed security service provider um, and has that as a, as a practice. And what, we, what we've seen out there is, again, going back to that skill set, many of the organizations have great, you know, either third parties helping them have eyes on glass 24-7, 365, or they've built up their own security operations center to do that. But many of them were trained in an on-prem environment, and they're able to see the alerts that are coming through and being able to decide and, and triage those, whether they are events or true incidents and or their noise in the system. But but maybe in, a, in an AWS environment or a cloud environment, maybe you can talk a little bit of, of what, what you're seeing out there from a skill set standpoint there and why, you know, you guys are going down the path of, you know, partnering with some people for MSSP as well. Yeah, a, a very relevant topic, uh, near and dear to my, my heart personally. And you're, you're, you're right, you know, the, the, that kind of last stage of that cloud journey, right? The, the application or the workload is there in the cloud. Now, security operations must continue. It has to extend to the cloud. Uh, taking your on-premises sort of procedures, your, your ways of aggregating uh, in, information and events, triage, analysis, incident response, runbooks, playbooks, those all have to evolve. Um, and, you know, the, the response actions to a cloud security event may be a lot different than if that was an on-premises workload environment. So we have uh, been teaming up with, uh, with companies around the world like PwC here and defining, you know, prescriptively sort of the, the, the general guidelines around managed security services, meaning what are the major doors and windows, as we like to call it, that should be monitored? What are the data sources for, for the telemetry that should be collected? And what are the recommended, you know, sort of categories of response activities, i.e., playbooks and runbooks that should be created as a result of that? So uh, it's been it's been a pleasure to be teamed up with PwC here and kind of working through those the beginning baselines of what's kind of minimums should happen out there for every cloud account. And you know, one of the one of the things I could give the audience here is sort of you know the the the, the things that my, my team personally focuses on are around vulnerability management as a continuous managed service. Uh, threat in, threat detection and incident response, you know, twenty four seven application security, edge security, host uh, host security as well, and endpoint security. All of those with the lens, of course, of, of AWS workloads and what the practitioners at the customers and at, at, at PwC, for example, should be doing uh, on a twenty four seven basis and kind of the operating procedures to be optimized for best practice configuration, say, for secure, for the services that are utilized in that workload. Yeah, Ryan, and I would add, you know, kind of one other area that we see kind of trending as well, and it comes, it relates to identity and access management, you know, in the cloud as well. And, and we continue to kind of see organizations, um, 
you know, find that as a bit of a challenge, right? So I would say, you know, a lot of organizations did a pretty good job of getting their identity and access management processes, procedures, and things under control for the on-prem environment. You know, the beauty of the cloud is being able to spin things up and add access and allow people to, you know, innovate and do things uh, quickly. But with that also comes some risk and, and um, the ability for some of these accounts to inherit rights that maybe are not, you know, least user privilege and some things like that. And and that's another area where we have seen, you know, some compromises and some breaches. And it really came down to maybe some suboptimal, you know, identity and access management processes within an organization. So we are spending, you know, a fair about more time with our customers on that. And even, you know, entertaining a managed service around being able to monitor, you know, a company's environment for, you know, least user privilege, you know, in, in say an AWS environment as well. Don't know if you have, you know, any comments on that as well related to identity. I, I would say if you're considering doing that, Jason, uh, please do it. That's a, that's a great <laughs> that's a great idea to add into again the 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 discipline around 24 seven monitoring, management, response, identity is a, is a key kind of pillar of that discipline, right? And and also you know it's it's it kind of highlights an, another thing I'd like to bring up around that discipline around identity. Uh, it also very much relates to sort of service configuration, security best practices as well. Identity is, is, is a lot of the time sort of one of those major factors in, in, a, in an event when it occurs and getting that identity configuration right, the policies right, and the service configuration that's, that's leveraging the identity policies. Those are high, very, very tightly coupled kind of mechanisms in the cloud environment. And native tools, third-party tools, that we really don't have a tools problem in general, in, in my personal opinion, around the security sphere. You know, the, the full package of a well-disciplined security team involves tools, it involves people, and it involves process, right? And you've, you've nailed one of the, the very big points around um, process, around identity policy, proper, proper you know, least, least privileged configuration, but having the tools and the people combined with that process makes a, a fully well-disciplined, you know, security practice. So if you're considering doing some kind of a service offering like that, Jason, yes, uh, please. I, I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it just goes back to basics, right? Requesting access, approving access, reviewing access, making sure it's appropriate given the, the you know, personal job responsibilities. And then when they don't need it, being able to take it away in a timely manner, right? I mean, basic principles but we've seen some of the organizations we work with maybe uh, lacks a little bit on some of that, um, you know, in the cloud environment as well. So um, with that, you know, closing thoughts for me is it's been a pleasure talking to you here again, Ryan. Uh, thank you for joining me here today and, and any other closing thoughts from you? Just want to say, yeah, thanks for having me. And again, the, the, the number one message here for the, for the audience watching is you, you're not alone. <laughs> Try to think about your journey into three big phases, assess, implement, manage. Um, and we're here, our, our AWS Partner Network security team and MSSP team, along with PwC to support you. So thanks for having me, Jason. It was a pleasure to see you again. Take care, Ryan.